In this video, I want to talk about the critical speeds of shafts under rotation. So I've previously mentioned that shafts, when they rotate at high speeds, uh, can have a natural frequency, like basically anything. And when the center of rotation does not coincide with the center of mass uh, with a shaft and uh, anything that may be mounted to it, uh, we can have problems with this critical speed in that we may get large displacements, wobbling, and things like that that can cause problems um, for our machine or for our device. So I want to talk about how we look at these critical speeds and then know to avoid them in our design. So the first example here is just a, a simple shaft with a single point load mounted to it. And this single point load represented here as a mass is causing a deflection delta st in that shaft. And we're kind of neglecting the mass of the shaft itself here and just kind of assuming that the the mass of whatever is mounted to it is, is much larger. So, you know, as we expect, each shaft would have a some stiffness, and we've previously seen the relationship between a weight applied to a shaft and its deflection and that stiffness uh, by this equation. So then, uh, without going into details of derivation, we can find the natural frequency, natural rotational frequency, using an equation that looks like this, uh, where it's equal to the square root of that stiffness over the mass. And if I do some substitutions of different things, so weight is related to mass and gravity, I can express that equation like this. And therefore, I can also express it like this as the square root of g uh, acceleration of gravity over delta st. Now, oftentimes we would want to or usually would express our critical speed uh, in RPM rather than, you know, radians per second. So we can do that conversion just as a unit conversion. And therefore, this is expressed in RPM. Uh, by multiplying that natural frequency by 30 over pi. Now, what if we have different uh, variations on this? Um, we get slightly different equations, but, but still generally the same principle. So suppose we have several objects mounted on this shaft, and I'm just going to draw three potential masses here, m1, m2, and m3. And then each of those causes some deflection measured at the location of that mass, delta 1, try to draw that a little better, delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3. And I'm leaving off the, the STs here just to, to make it a little um, easier to write. So now if we want to express this and determine its critical speed, we have our same unit conversion in here. Uh, and now we need to treat this as um, a discrete like summation of the number of number of parts. So we can write this as g times the summation of w delta. So this is all the little um, components of delta and w divided by the summation of w delta squared. And really what these two summations are doing is getting like a weighted average um, for these various components. So it's it's taking all the little components and weighting them over the over the whole and finding their contribution then to that critical speed. Now, in these previous two, we've more or less neglected the, the shaft itself, but of course a shaft itself is likely to have um, deflection of its own with its own mass. So if we have 
um, just the shaft mass by itself considered, we can determine again some deflection uh, where it's at its maximum value. And if we were to do this, we can find an equation for the natural frequency, which looks like this. 5g over 4 delta st. And of course, then, um, we know how already how to convert that to, to critical speed. But basically, this is just giving us a relationship um, based on the mass of the shaft by itself. Um, we also have an expression which we can use to find delta st in this scenario, which is 5wl to the fourth over 384 ei. And this might look familiar from a, from beam bending and when you talk about beam bending problems uh, and things like that in units of inches here. So this gives us the ability to, to calculate what's going on um, with a given shaft. 